Uh, now, Josh Widdicombe's kept us uh, entertained through lockdown with his parenting podcast alongside Rob Beckett, as well as hosting The Last Leg. And now he's back with a new series of his panel show, Hypothetical. <laughs> uh, good morning to you, Josh. Nice to have you Hello. on the show. Lovely to be here. It's just pure escapism, just silly, funny belly laughs, isn't it? Yeah, there's absolutely no COVID chat. I can promise you that. Um, that it's genuinely, it's a, um, it's just a really silly uh, panel show. That it's third series now, and um, we've really been happy about how everyone's responded to it and how, you know, how it's. We recorded it in that kind of gap between the when just like we had, a, we're able to have a few people in the studio yeah. and stuff, and um, it felt so nice to. Just be back hanging out with friends and just back at work, really. Yeah, absolutely. And there's this thing about the randomizer, which I saw a clip of, which really made me giggle. Just explain what goes on. And the, and and actually, the point you make there is quite a serious one. That you you absolutely, you, as a conscious decision, do not want to talk about COVID at all during this show. No. Well, we weren't allowed to talk about COVID. Uh, the channel wouldn't let us talk about COVID. I don't know why. Just in case it's repeated in a few years and then people have forgotten what COVID is, I suppose. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we. Uh, the, with the randomizer, we basically it's a, just a way of doing questions where we just pick them out at random, and then um, the, the whole show is based around asking comedians silly hypotheticals that they don't know um, they're going to be asked. They've got no. A lot of these shows, you know, you'll go on, and you know what's going to happen and stuff. But we found no, comedians are lazy. It's much easier to book them if you tell them there's no homework to do beforehand. That's brilliant. Um, and just tell me a little bit about. The last leg, of course, it's been such an enormous success and never more so than perhaps in this last year. And there, of course, you talk about the news, which is all about COVID. <laughs> has, how difficult has that been in a way for tone and understanding how far you can take things, given it's such a, you know, a sensitive topic? I, I, well, I think you, it's, it's a case of you, you make the jokes about your own experiences of being locked down or, you know, um, or silly things that have kind of come out of it but um obviously it is a very it's a serious topic but I don't think you can shy away from that in a topical show do you know what I mean I think you've got to talk about these topics and I think it's what everyone's talking about and everyone wants some light relief from that so I don't, I don't think you know I think the main problem for these topical shows is when there's no big news there was a time in 2013 or whenever it was when we covered the Greek financial crisis four weeks in a row so, you know. You and me both, no, mate. Was when the show was <laughs> I really be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's brilliant. And the thing is, you're so busy. You are you just keep yourself busy, don't you? Yeah, I know. I'm I'm sure a psychologist would pick a lot out of that. But uh yeah, I don't like just sitting around. I don't, I I like kind of doing stuff. And um and the and the, also, and, the you know, and the podcast is one of those things, isn't it? The what's it called? The uh, lockdown parenting hell podcast, which I listened to last night. It's very funny. Yeah. So me and Rob started this because we were basically spending our time complaining about to each other about how difficult it was <laughs> in lockdown with children, and then you know the only thing that was making me better was hearing how badly it was going for Rob. So I thought, you know, surely this is kind of something we could do for other people is if we complain, maybe that'll, that'll count as entertainment. And also, I'm not going to lie, it's a way of just going upstairs and getting a bit of time to yourself. So you're like, Daddy's That's working. Really what the... <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are some of the things that you and Rob have stumbled across, you know, about parenting in lockdown that has had a good response and, you know, has made you laugh? Well, I, I think the general point, like a kind of serious point, is just there was a time at the start of lockdown where people thought that the whole thing was about, you know, learning French or learning... Yeah a skill or having these moments with your child. And I just think, you know, not to be too ambitious about the whole thing. If you can, like, get through the day and you're all kind of happy and you've all had a kind of nice experience and you've got some time to yourself in the evening, that's kind of the victory, really. I don't think... I think people are putting too much pressure on these times. And you'd go on Instagram and people are doing these amazing things and this is the opposite of it. It's going, actually, this is really difficult. Yeah, and it's just funny and you can just see the humour in kind of your lack of creativity. You have no creativity at home. And so I just think, gosh, I'm failing all the time because you just think, gosh, we'll be doing some arts and crafts and I just can't be bothered half the time. Um, yeah. But the, what was funny was I saw you posted something about your Valentine's Day, which wasn't quite as romantic as perhaps you might have hoped. No, it wasn't. Um, no, I got an email from a boiler company um, saying that, uh, did they want to spend... There was some weird email which was like, do you want to get a new boiler for Valentine's Show us a boiler, a little love for Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, 
To which I'm not going to lie. What you do behind you know. closed doors is your own business. I don't want to know how you give your boiler some love. But... <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, Josh, did you know we're going to put you to the test now? So we're going to play okay. our very own game of hypothetical. OK. Yeah. It's yeah. got a natty little title called Ramvia's Hypothetical. <laughs> what Lovely. would Josh do? That's right. Really nice. So, really, hypothetical really number sick. one is... Our editor calls in sick and you're put in charge of tomorrow's show. What items oh will word. you include? Oh, well, high street fashion. That always goes down well on Lorraine. High street fashion. Um, and uh, then I do... Um, well, you know, from, from what I can tell, Lorraine has done soaps every day for the last 20 years, so I do What's Going On in the Wall Pack. We've got some of that EastEnders Wolf... coming up as it happens, yeah. Oh, well, there we go, you see. I'm on, I'm on a plate. And then I do... Um, I just do a long form interview with um, the Queen because I think that would actually go down really well in terms of viewers. The Queen of Daytime speaking to HRH. I want to see Exa that. Exactly. I want to see that. Right, exactly. hypothetical number two is you and I are forced to audition oh. on Britain's Got Talent as a oh, duo. No. What is our act? Oh, wow, that is a great hypothetical. Um, I think our act would be... I think we could be like... We could be like a barbershop quartet. Could you sing? Uh, but there was, there's only two of them. I'm totally up for think? this. I don't know. Do we need to dress up like the masked singer just in case we really fail miserably? Yeah, of course. I think, I mean, let's bow to the inevitable. We're going to be on that show dressed up at some point, mate. So we might as well do it as soon as possible. A barbershop quartet. Is, is that okay with just two? Yeah, a quartet. Yeah, because with that, two. that's the unique selling point. It's, that, it's half yeah, a barbershop that's quartet. It. That's it. We're going to get a golden buzzer for that. I can feel it in my water. <laughs> uh, it's been so lovely to have you on the show. And thank Let's you for just cheering you. up the whole nation uh, with no everything worries. that you do. Uh, because actually, it is escapism and it is seeing the funny side of a really sort of slightly dreary time in all our lives. So thank yeah. you so much. Hypothetical continues tomorrow night uh, at 10 pm on Dave. Thank you very much. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.